Hey guys, this is your week 13 of your autumn chi chat. As you know, I am out for the holiday, so I pre-recorded this for you all. Just for us to have a better understanding about chi chats in general, is that this is a weekly accountability coaching program that every week, every Friday, you get a video that you can join me live for a lecture or you can get the recording to where you are given an opportunity to learn a little more about how to take care of yourself. Last week during our Chi Chats, we talked about your four pillars of health, that if you wanna have the roof hold up over your head of health, that you are going to be the master of your health through sleep, through digestion, through breathing, and through movement. All of these are actually covered in bamboo bodies. Whether you move with me online or in person, or you just simply love my coaching accountability uh, program, is I wanna give you the tools to understand how it doesn't have to be so complex, <laughs> that we can do small things. And for this holiday season, as we transition from autumn into winter, we recognize that we focus in on the spleen chi, generalizing our digestion. Because when we go into transitioning from one season to the next, it actually is taxing on our digestive system. Most people won't necessarily notice it, but in fact, Every single season, every shift, we move into a new gear and how we eat, how we think about eating, how the seasons are shifting and so our food starts to shift a little bit. Some of us can get all out of whack, which is why week 13 is really exciting and also really comical because it usually drops right over the holiday season. So. For those of you who were able to take my mastery course on digestion, some of this will be familiar. And in last week's Chi Chats, I saw some nods who wanted some repetition to hear what we had talked about during that mastery course. For those who've been with me, this shouldn't be brand new, but for some, you might think, oh, I don't apply that to my life. These are just tips and tools that I wanna to bring to you from both a neuro and a geological standpoint so that we can find balance in how we take care of ourselves and how we age. And as I mentioned, one pillar, it's digestion, which is kind of exciting because it's gonna help with your other pillows, pillars. It's gonna help how you breathe, it's gonna help how you sleep, it's gonna help how you move. So let's blend everything together. The first thing that I want to address is it's the holidays. You're going to get a lot of information from the web or from different emails, from different ads that are gonna push you towards different diets because you gotta watch yourself. You're an out of control animal during the holiday. Here's a great way to diet. Actually, there's one point that I want to have you recognize and celebrate is that tis the season. There's all sorts of really fun and yummy foods that come out and I don't want you to have to think, no, I can't eat anything. This is about pleasure. Food is about community. It's about ritual. So I want you to understand that there's nothing in today's chat that's going to have you leave thinking, oh, Angie told me no. No, eat the pumpkin pie. Enjoy whatever it is that you love this holiday season. I wanna show you how you can enjoy the pumpkin pie and feel even better after you eat the pumpkin pie. So first little neuro cheat tip for the holiday season is I'd like for you to learn how to prepare yourself before you eat. And the one tip that I wanna give you on this is considering preparing the body through Qigong. Now this is one of my absolute favorites because it actually starts to create a little more flow of your saliva, which are natural enzymes, which helps you better digest. This is something that you can do where not everyone's staring at you, and I'll show you a couple variations. And then I'll give you another option if you're like, Angie, I'm with family and friends, they already think I'm insane. Do you have another option that's not the Qigong? Yes, let's start with the Qigong variation. This is one of my favorite. You are going to trace the tongue in line with your digestive system. We're gonna focus in on the colon. So when you're looking at me, I'm going to be mirroring you. So you're gonna reach your right hand on your right side of your hip. The right rises. Your transverse colon goes across and your left hand lowers. We have now gone through the direction of your colon. It goes up over and then out of your body. We wanna follow that line as you bring your hands together, massaging around the torso. 
your tongue is going to follow this. I'll demonstrate as it runs over your gum lines. It goes up, hmm, hmm, hmm. Try this with me, because I feel insane already. So, three times, ready? Up on your right. Mm -hmm. And then go the other direction. Nah. All right. Ideally, from the Qigong standpoint, is you'll do it anywhere from 9 to 18 times. And believe you me, going for that full 18 times, you're going to realize, oh, I need to exercise my tongue. Cool fact. When we start moving that tongue and any of these uh, activities within the mouth, they actually will tap into the vagus nerve, which is going to tap into that rest digest. It's really cool and calming on the nervous system. So a calming exercise, getting you prepared to eat is stimulating the uh, salivary glands to have saliva. You can probably feel it. Swallow that golden elixir. It's also going to calm the nervous system and anything where you're doing hand work on the tummy, that's also a vagal stim. So Qigong, vagus nerve, calming the self down. Now, if you're thinking, all right, that's great but maybe I don't have the time or I forgot. What else can I do to prepare myself because the foods are coming? One cool tip to helping you be able to digest that food and have the body prepared for it is actually with a little aperitif, if you will. Beginning your meal about 15 to 30 minutes prior with apple cider vinegar diluted in water. I have to preface that because just yesterday someone said, oh yeah, I love taking apple cider vinegar. Take a whole shot of it. That'll ruin your teeth, your esophagus, and dear God, why? So what I want for you to do is about a tablespoon, that's it, about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar diluted in a glass of water. Just drink that and then you can get yourself ready for the meal. What that apple cider vinegar is going to do is essentially help, and I think it's about 25% decrease a glucose spike that's gonna happen when you start eating. So it's actually gonna dampen any of those spikes and calm because the body's gonna be busy filtering through that apple cider vinegar and saying, okay, I think other stuff is coming. I'm super ready for this. What is it? Vinegar is a really cool pre-meal drink to have. You can also have this as pickles. I don't know about you, but I usually will see a pickle tray out with all sorts of fun pickled things that you can have before you eat. That said, let's talk about what to do when you sit down and you've got all these really delicious food choices in front of you. Load your plate up. I really don't care. It's the holiday. My God, enjoy it. But what I'd like for you to do is we're going to go into those who remember from the digestion is we talked about when we eat, we want to think about eating in order. So the first thing that you want to eat is having something that's going to be more fibrous. We're wanting to look more at the vegetables as a good option. Uh, it's probably the more realistic meal that's going to be there. If there are some nuts or seeds that you can snack on right before the meal that's available to you, also a great bonus. Because what we're creating is essentially like a netting. Because you and I both know that the holiday season is full of really, really amazing sweets and starches. They're delicious, they're super fun, but they also can spike your cortisol levels. And again, a one-time deal, it's fine. You're gonna be fine. During my digestion course, we talked about over a lifetime of eating like it's a holiday, that's where it becomes problematic. So understanding how to eat in order can benefit you from having consistent glucose spikes, which really the real problem is, is the insulin constantly being called. And then that's the issue is the insulin resistance that can happen down the road. Plus a glucose spike can make people feel a little jittery and sometimes we can get into a sugar loop that we're like, I really want to eat more of that pumpkin pie because I just started with the pumpkin pie and I want more of it. So if you're looking at just trying to enjoy everything and not go manic, start with something fibrous. If you're looking around and you're like, this is really bizarre, this Thanksgiving table has no vegetables on it, no nuts, no seeds, no beans, what am I gonna do? Then go into your, your fats so you can dive into your turkey. That's totally okay. The thing that I'm really wanting to have you recognize is don't start skimming the melted marshmallows off the candied yams yet. Hang on a second. Don't dive right into those delicious fluffy mashed potatoes. Hang on a second. See if you can have something either fibrous 
something with higher protein and even fat before you get into all your starches and sweets. That said, let's talk about the sweets. I love pumpkin pie. And to be super honest, if I have pumpkin pie in front of me, or if I've got a pecan pie, my brain explodes. I don't know. Oh, I don't know which one to do. Usually I just get two slices of both because they're delicious. So here's an interesting uh, truth about this from not only a glucose perspective, but also with taking care of what happens within the mouth, all these little sugar bugs that love all the sugar coming in. When we eat, take a break and then eat again, especially if it's sugary, it creates a whole load of problems. Now, I understand if you at home have a tradition where you say, oh no, 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 after we've eaten, we all just not do anything and we wait and then we have dessert. Here's my quick caveat for you. That's totally fine. Tradition is tradition. You're probably gonna drive a lot of people crazy because I always hated waiting for dessert. My family were the waiters. Uh, but what you can do is go for a walk. Honestly, that's one of the best things that you can do. If you are going to take that break between uh, your meal and the dessert, get the family and friends up, get your booty up and go for a walk. Enjoy just five to 15 minutes of breathing in that air and starting to move. You see within your movement, as I mentioned within your four pillars, it can actually help your digestion. And when you're moving, you're breathing, which is going to help stimulate with the vagus nerve and also help you with more uh, brain stim to help calm the nervous system so you can rest and digest, getting into gut motility. It's really good to have your body be able to digest things. So anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes is great. If you live in a home where no one's leaving and you're like, anybody wanna go for a walk? No, okay. You can march. You literally can just stare at everyone who didn't join you on the walk and just watch them with deep eye contact as you march for one minute to five minutes. It's something. Plus it'll give everybody something to talk about all year long. Remember when so-and-so went insane after Thanksgiving dinner, you'd be the topic to talk about all year long. So regardless if you eat the pie immediately after, which is fine, or if you do want to take that break, Walking when you're done eating is going to be incredibly advantageous. That said, there's your holiday little movement program digestion uh, checklist. But here's what I want you to think about as we continue moving into the holiday seasons. The pumpkin pie may be gone within a week, but then comes the cookies, then comes the eggnog, then comes all the other fun foods that happen. This is when we do have to recognize A, Eat your foods in order. That can help you with that sugar loop that you'll get into. Don't just say, oh yeah, I'll have a cookie and eat a cookie. If you can say, absolutely. And start finding ways that you can have a fibrous snack that is always on hand. That again is going to drop that spike of glucose because you created this netting as it goes through the small intestine that it's not just sugar into the bloodstream and then your whole body has to figure out what to do with excess sugar. Instead, with these fibers, they create this netting and the body's actually able to have less glucose spice, spikes, less of the sugar loop of saying, oh, I just want more sugar. You'll actually be able to grab one cookie and enjoy the one cookie if you prepared some type of a fibrous snack. So I think that's always really exciting. Uh, and again, nuts is one of the easiest ones. If you don't have something fibrous, you can go always go into uh, different types of fats and proteins. Um, so I always say just like carrots and hummus. Uh, I just said beans. I don't know if you just want to crack open a can of beans. That's, that's weird. Um, cheese is another one, just something so that you're not just reaching for the sugars. I think that's going to be a big takeaway for many of us. And that was one preface that I really tried to give everyone in the, um, mastery course was just don't reach for stuff so quickly. Instead be like, wait a second, I can have that. I totally can have that. But first I need to, it's called uh, dressing your carbs. Um, is have something before you eat it. This is where I feel like we can feel, we can have more control in how we eat and what we eat. And this is the part that I love about the holiday season. It's a time to celebrate. It's really not a time to completely and totally restrict and say no to everything. But in fact, as we enter the winter season, 
This is the time about slowing down. And as we're gonna continue talking during our chi chats, I wanna teach you how to nourish the kidney chi. Really, this is the season that echoes how we are going to age because this is the season that is going to be reflective upon what we've done all year long. I always feel that our winter season is kind of like receiving our marks going, how'd you do this past year? And for those who receive poor marks, maybe you're not sleeping so well. Maybe you've got digestive issues. Maybe you're injured and you can't get out of the injury. No matter what's going on within your pillars of life, what's exciting is every day is a new day and every single year we get a new season. And so during the winter season, it's not about starting anew. It's not about cleaning everything up. It's not about New Year's resolutions. And we will dive deep into that as we move into the autumn, or excuse me, as we move into the winter season. But what I'm going to guide you on in this next season is understanding how we can cultivate, how we can see, and how we can anticipate this change with the seasons by currently leaning into our kidney chi. My parting thought that I wanna give you all is that when we learn how to move, to eat, to sleep, to be well with the seasons, it's as simple as hoisting the sails and the breeze blows you in the correct direction. It shouldn't be so intense. Like I said, I never told anybody, oh, you can eat this instead of this. Oh, here's a healthier way to make a pumpkin pie. I love my mom's pecan pie and my God, there's a lot of sugar in there. But the thing is, is that I enjoy it and I wait all year long to get ready to enjoy it again. There's nothing wrong with these pleasures. So the thing is, is that when I hoist my sails of health, I'm already in the right trajectory I'm doing it at the right time and everything moves me forward with ease. I don't want you to think that it has to be so hard. I will continue to guide you on this this winter season. As always, thank you for your time and your commitment, whether you watch this in person or if you watch it recorded, which obviously this one is. But I love sharing what I read, what I learn, and what I see in who I work with and who I collaborate with. This isn't something that's to be held in my own journey. In fact, I don't learn anything without knowing your journeys. So I love that you joined me on this and thank you again for um, the things that you share and your thoughts. And as always, I'll continue to share with you. Happy holidays to you all. I look forward to seeing you all next week as we jump into winter bamboo bodies. I'll see you guys later. All be well, bye.